Hey, we're live again. This time hello, from hello. After a short break, I'm in Japan. Scott is probably home, Tel Aviv. Yes, Here I is. am. There we go. That's the introduction. No introduction. Anyways, uh, let's go with questions. Anybody, if you have questions, start typing. Otherwise, we don't know what to do here. Ask anything you want. And we reserve the right to say we have no bloody idea. That's the goal. Uh, we have already one from Saihom, Saihom, something like that. Are there any situations where Rancher Fleet would be better choice than Flux or Argo CD? Three, two, one. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, put it at this. I, was this. Developed. I, I would say it like this. I have yet to ever see a case or even a theoretical situation where Rancher Fleet would be better. Does that mean that there is no such thing? No. Just not that, you know, has been created on planet Earth till today. It's probably for, you know, for companies who want to go all in on a single vendor, you know. There are many companies that do everything that AWS offers or everything that Red Hat offers, kind of. And then maybe that's... Uh, right. It, the, if you're... There must be somebody using it. I never met that person, but there must be somebody exactly. using it. Exactly. Right? If you have purchased Rancher and you do not have the money to pay someone like code fresh or control plane or someone for support on argo cd or flux and you have a mandate that everything must be commercially supported then that is the only situation that i would say rancher fleet makes any sense under planet earth and boy you will need the support for sure then <laughs> yes <laughs> This is yes. like self-fulfilling prophecy, kind of. Hey, you cannot use something without support. And now that you're using this time, this thing, you definitely need support. Well, it's how they convince you that you need support. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, from uh, Revi, can you please describe what are the differences between Docker and Podman? I haven't used Podman in a long while. How fresh is Podman in your brain? Yeah. So I've used Podman. Um, there's a few things I would say on that. Um, Podman is a better architecture than Docker. Um, we'll start with that. It's more secure by default, uh, doesn't require as elevated of permissions, doesn't need root to run on the operating system. There's a lot of benefits to it. Um, I still will not use it. And the reason is, is because <laughs> it's, li it's like Docker in 99% of cases. The issue is, is that everywhere that I go, somehow there is that 1% that it's not exactly like Docker. Um, and it handles everything just that tiny little bit different that it just makes it really difficult to use. Um, is Podman better security? Yes. The only thing that I think going for Podman now is I don't know if it was accepted or, but I did see it was up for, I think it was accepted as Sandbox in CNCF. Um, and if it is in CNCF, if it is officially CNCF, then I would say it is worth looking at again because it's not vendor driven and it's part of a foundation and maybe it will have a chance now. Um, but it's just like, yes, cryo, right? Container runtime interface, O, whatever O means, uh, cryo is better than container D. You could definitely make that case from a security perspective, all of that. However, I will never use cryo because only OpenShift uses it and every other distribution on planet earth uses container D. So I'm going to use what the industry uses. Yeah. And, you know, it's also, for many people, those differences might not be relevant, right? Uh, sometimes it's, you can, right. I mean, in my head, it makes more sense to use some sort of standard. And if you reach the point and say, hey, I hit the wall with this thing, I need something right. else. And then you start exploring, okay, so I don't know, will cryo solve that issue for me or something like that? Right. And like, yes, cryo is more secure than container D, 
But like in that case, I would say just go with like GVisor or Kata containers or something. Like if security really matters to you, go all out and use micro VMs. Like just like go down that path and like, you know, have a good time and actually have like full isolation and all is good. Um, otherwise, just use what the industry uses. Podman is more secure, but I just, it, yeah, it's hard for me to <laughs> something that isn't the industry standard. Okay, for pure havoc, uh, broad question, but what's your general take on Pulumi versus Terraform? I, I'm not using Pulumi heavily for a while now. I always thought that they're the same tool, just with a different syntax. That, that was my take on Pulumi. I don't know what are the latest features, so that might not be the case anymore. I have never liked Pulumi. Um, I don't believe in infrastructure as code. I believe in infrastructure as config. Um, and because I don't consider HCL <coughs> code, I consider it a config language, just like YAML is not code. It is a config language, um, I believe. So like cross-plane, uh, all of those are config. Um, and I believe that that is the correct approach. And that's why I like Terraform way more than I like Pulumi. I think the issue with Pulumi is that you get all of the negatives of general purpose programming languages and almost none of the benefits of the general purpose languages. Um, it still has to create a DAG, a direct acrylic graph or whatever the, you know, it has to create that DAG before it can apply. So I don't get a lot of the benefits that I would um, in uh, standard programming. Um, which makes it a challenge. And okay, so the for loop has a better syntax. I'd still prefer to go with the de facto industry standard, which is Terraform slash open tofu. I mean, I would just like to clarify something. I think it's quite okay to go against the industry standard when something is changing drastically, right? Kind of hey, this is a completely different way of doing things. And then, of course, you need to break right. the standard in a way to go for that. But I'm with you kind of That's say, what this, is, this, right? this feels the same. Maybe, yeah, I didn't want to kind of sound like broken record with Crossman. But yeah, right. Or, yeah, oh, the industry standard were VMs. We go with Kubernetes. That's not the standard at the time, right? That's okay because this is something very different, right? This is this is a because my outcome problem. is different. Also, my exactly. outcome is different. I have a completely different value here. When you look at something like Pulumi, in the end, it's still a one-off shot. It's a one-shot actions like Terraform apply. It's Pulumi apply. Like it's it's the same thing. It's just different language. And then I never understood AWS CDK TFCD. Also, it's like if you want to write in general purpose language, just use TFCDK. And then it serializes into Terraform, and then like you have a bigger ecosystem than you do in Pulumi. Okay, from Pau, hello. I have a crossplane composition that composes two other compositions in EKS cluster, another with Flux resources that's now things in EKS cluster. Cool. Uh, how can I make sure that I, when I delete the top composition? All the Kubernetes resources are removed before start deleting EKS cluster. That part is painful. Wait, my, my brain now stopped. What's the name of the function? Usage uh, resource. You have to usage, use a resource exactly. called the usage. Exactly. Yeah. You basically say, hey, this resource uses that resource. And that means that this resource cannot be deleted until that resource is deleted. Now, but yeah. then you need to put extra effort to really define those things. So I would say I use usages, but use it only when you need it. Don't use it. Don't don't go crazy and start kind of defining all the dependencies between all the resources. You're just gonna go, to go crazy, right? Exactly. Uh, the deleting resources in a cluster created with the same composition is one of. If you delete the cluster first, then those those resources will be in a dangling state, forever and ever. So yeah. Right. Uh, from Iposipos, what, which would you recommend? Victoria Metrics is a drop-in replacement for Prometheus or Prometheus to scrap the metrics and remote write it to Victoria. So without entering conversation, whether to use Prometheus or Victoria Metrics, but if you are already using Victoria, 
And this is more to you, Scott, the question. Why would you use Prometheus then? I mean, just from if a scalability perspective. Just from the scalability perspective of you would have one centralized Prometheus and you would have one Prometheus in each cluster. Mm -hmm. So it's all pulling, you know, you would have one centralized Prometheus and that you would connect or one centralized Victoria metrics you would add to Grafana or whatever. And you would have a small base in each cluster collecting the metrics locally and shipping them off to that centralized Victoria metrics, <coughs> which is a standardized approach for scalability concerns.